For 2021, we saw BMW introduce the R18 and R18 Classic as a heavyweight cruiser platform. Now they've just introduced the Transcontinental and R18B as more of a heavyweight touring platform. We're taking a first look at the Transcontinental. As we see here, this is the first edition. It's all covered up with all sorts of trim packages. So let's get into exactly what's new about this bike, how it compares to the R18, and what we can expect when we get to ride it later this month. So the base MSRP for the Transcontinental is gonna be 24,995. But of course, in true BMW fashion, you rarely see the stock bike stripped down without any accessories. Here we have the first edition. The first edition package adds 2150, and that includes a lot of the chrome that you see here, that front engine cover, the chrome head cases here, the intake cover here, and uh, obviously the metallic black paint and the double pin striping. So this also comes with the premium package, which includes hill start, reverse, headlight pro, adaptive headlight, as well as the new adaptive cruise control, and adds 3225 to the MSRP. This also comes installed with the select package, which has an alarm system, central locking bags, a uh, lockable gas cap there, and tire pressure monitoring. This adds 950 to the MSRP. So all in with this thing all dressed up, it brings that 24,995 MSRP plus the 645 destination fee to 31,965 as it sits here in front of us. So now we can get into the components on this bike and how it compares to the R18, which we've ridden before. Uh, up front, obviously the huge change here is the handlebar mounted fairing. You have a 10.25 inch display screen, which you would navigate with the uh, typical BMW roller here. This is navigation and media that all works through BMW's Motorrad Connect app. You have the Marshall Stage 2 speakers up here in the fairing. You also have them in the back and in the saddlebag lids there. We were trying it out earlier. It gets incredibly loud. It takes a little bit of tuning with the uh, EQ in the system, but once you get it dialed, it sounds very nice. A big thing that we haven't seen in the American style touring motorcycles is adaptive cruise control. You see a radar on the front of the bike here. The way this works is you set your top optimal cruising speed. It will go at that speed until it senses a car or motorcycle in front of you and then maintain speed to maintain distance from that vehicle. You have an identical 49 millimeter fork to the R18. This is non-adaptive, it's non-adjustable, but it did work very well previously in our testing of the R18. One of the big things on this bike is the rear shock. It is now adaptive and automatically adjusts for preload. It does so with a load sensor and a ride height sensor, which work with the servo motor to adjust the spring preload on that rear shock. The R18 had only 3.5 inches of travel in the rear. Now we see 4.7 inches of suspension travel, both front and rear. This is probably going to help the ride. I imagine it'll be smoother. It might also help with ground clearance and lean angle. Up front, we have a 19 inch cast aluminum wheel, also cast aluminum 16 inch in the rear. One big change that we see as far as the chassis of this bike is the rake. It was 32.7 degrees on the R18, which is pretty long. Now it's reduced to 27.3. So when we do get to ride this bike, we expect it to be substantially more nimble despite the weight gains with this larger bike. With that shorter rake, we now have a shorter wheelbase. So you're looking at uh, 66.7 inches as opposed to 68.1 on the R18. So compared to the bagger model, you have a taller windshield here. You also have floorboards and on the bagger, there are just wider foot pegs. Uh, you also have a slightly larger seat on this bike. And obviously the top case is the big thing there. If you look inside the top case, it is very spacious, should have no problem fitting two helmets in there. Also, what you don't see on the bagger model, the crash bars here and the lower fairings. One thing that we really did like about the R18 was the ability to sort of throw your foot up on the front, use it almost like a highway peg with those big cooling fins. It didn't get too hot. And this does sort of block the ability to do that. So when we ride it, we'll see if, if that's something that sort of bugs us or if we do like having those lower fairings. One thing that BMW did to sort of keep the classic aesthetic was they kept analog gauges above that huge screen. This adds a really cool look, sort of what we're used to seeing in the American touring market. You have fuel gauge here, speedometer, tachometer, and then a power reserve percentage, I believe has something to do with the fuel injector's butterfly valve and the percentage that it's open. Uh, we'll find out more about that shortly. One big thing is right here in the middle of the tank, as you need to use your phone for the navigation and media, you have wireless charging and phone storage right there. 
nice and convenient. But again, you're using your phone constantly. It doesn't have independent nav. It can't run that on its own. So if your phone dies, you're probably out of luck. Passenger consideration, of course, is a huge thing with touring models like this. So seat heating comes standard for both the rider and the passenger. Passenger control is independent with the little switch on the side right there. We saw 81.3 horsepower and 103.1 foot-pounds of torque on our dyno previously. We can expect similar numbers out of this bike, but again, with the added weight, the character might change a little bit. All right, one last thing before we go. We gotta start it up, rev it up a little bit and let you guys hear the engine. It's obviously a new pipe. You don't see the same fishtail that we saw in the R18, so let's see how this new one sounds. Get a little bit of a whir, nice deep sound from the pipes. Rev it up. And of course, as that big boxer, you expect a little bit of a shake in the handlebars, get that character there. So stay tuned, we get to ride this bike later this month. We'll have a review out for you on August 30th. Uh, if you like what we're doing, like, follow, subscribe, and we will see you then with our first ride review.